Hey guys, this is Leo with SVG Cuts, and today I'm going to give you a first look at the brand new Cricut Design Space software. So let's dive right in. Now I just want to preface this video by letting you guys know that we've not yet received our Cricut Explore. We're actually still waiting on it, so the projects that we're going to show you here from SVG Cuts have not yet been cut with the machine, but we did want to give you a sneak peek at the actual Cricut software because so many of you have been asking about uh, what we thought about it and you wanted our opinion uh, on the new machine as well as the software. So. Now the first thing you'll notice when you log in is this screen here where you can go ahead and just pick one of these projects to uh, you know create, uh, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to start by clicking on create new project. And doing that is going to give us basically a blank canvas. So the first thing we're going to notice when we log into the new design space are these options over here on the left. The first one is insert images. And when we click on this, it basically brings up the Cricut library of content. Okay, and you can see here under this drop down, you have some other options as well. Uh, but this is a way for you to use content from their online store. And I'm also guessing that you'll be able to link your cartridges and you know download and, and use your content from those cartridges. So now the second button here is the upload image button. That's the button that we're going to be focusing on today. And when we click on that, we get this screen where you have two options. One for basic upload, which is for more of a raster based image, like a JPEG, a GIF, a ping, or a bitmap. So as it states here, you can take these various formats, upload them, and the software will convert them into a cuttable image. Now that's something again that we're not going to test in this video because we want to focus more on this feature here, the vector upload. And again, it states here that you can upload not only your SVG files, but DXF files as well. Uh, today we're going to focus on SVG files since we are SVG cuts. So right now, as you can see, I've already used this software and played around with it a little bit. And what happens after you upload your SVG file, it goes into this list here under uploaded images. Okay. Now you'll also notice, which uh, is actually surprising and it's a really cool thing, a really cool feature is when you upload the files, it will actually take the file names that we use and label them automatically. Okay, so we can go ahead and click vector upload. Now I recently did a tutorial on how to do something similar with the uh, brother scan and cut uh, and they have a way to import SVG files as well, but they don't automatically label the files for you, which is something that Cricut has done, which we all will appreciate. So let me go back just one step here, just so that we're on the same page. So I'm going to click on vector upload. Okay. And basically we're going to hit browse and locate a folder that contains SVG files. So in this case, I'm going to go into the honeybee T SVG collection. Okay. Under SVG files, here's this Victorian teapot. And actually let me show you a photo of what we're actually going to be importing here. So here's the Victorian teapot. Okay. And basically what we're going to do, as you can see, there are multiple layers that are required to be cut in order to create the final product. So let's start with pot one. Okay. So we're going to open that. And as you can see here, it puts it and gives you a little preview and it automatically takes that name and puts it in here. And you can tag it if you want to add some keywords and go ahead and hit save image. Now you'll notice that it went ahead and added it into your uploaded images list down here. So what you can do at this point is select one or more of the files that you've uploaded. Okay. In this case, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do two right now. I'm going to open up these two. Okay. See, there's little check marks here which means they've been selected and now we can click insert images. All right. So it's, it's gone ahead and inserted them and it's stacked them on top of each other. Now, one thing that I did notice right off the bat that is not ideal, uh, but 
from a programming standpoint, this is something that can be fixed. Uh, the files, they don't import at the native size, which basically means that when we create these files, we save them at a specific dimension. Now let me show you what I mean by that. If you open up the PDF file that's included with each of our kits and collections, you'll notice that we have a legend that basically tells you all of the dimensions for each project. So let's go down to the teapot and you'll notice that pot one should be 11.2 inches wide. Now if we go ahead and highlight this and click on edit, we'll notice that it comes in at 2.39. Now again, this is an extra step, uh, but if we need to, we can go in and this just shows you how great my memory is, 11.2 inches wide. So we can go in and this little checkbox here or this little lock basically will maintain proportions. So what we can do is we, we don't need to worry about the height. We just set that to 11.2, hit return, and it sizes it to what we recommend you cut it out at. So let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, now here's that other piece. And now you're, you're used to putting just one item on a mat, usually. Uh, but the Cricut design space is a little bit different. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Let me open up that PDF again, and let's get that other piece figured out here. That one should be 8.5 inches wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it. And in this edit box, I'm gonna type 8.5. Okay, so now we've got these two files at the right size. Now here's where, um, surprisingly, there's an actually a, a really cool feature uh, that I was really surprised they were able to incorporate into the software. So you'll see here under layers, okay, we've got the lid panels and we've got the pot. Now you'll notice that under pot, pot one, there are three separate layers. Okay, now let's turn them off one at a time so you can see what each one is. So you'll see here that if I turn this one off, it turns off the scoring layer. Okay, and if I turn this one off, it turns off these numbers that we cut in to the project to help you identify the pieces. Okay, and then this final layer is obviously the meat and bones of the cut. So with the Explore having the ability to cut and score at the same time, which is actually unlike any other machine on the market, even uh, the Sizzix Eclipse right now does have a score feature, but the Eclipse basically what it does is it does a kiss cut for the score lines, which you can also specify in a very similar fashion with the eCal software. But with the Cricut Design Space and the Cricut Explore, what we can do is we can specify what we want it to do to each layer. So here, obviously, the meat and bones of the cut, this part here that I'm turning off and on, we want this to cut. So we're gonna specify that we want it to cut. And I do that by clicking this little scissor icon here. Okay, and it gives you the option to cut, write, or score. We wanna keep that as cut. Okay, now this layer here, these numbers, I would prefer that those are cut as well because you want to be able to see them. If you score them, they may not show up. And this final layer, the scoring layer, I would actually prefer aesthetically for the sake of making it look nicer, I want that to score. So I'm gonna click score here. So now you'll see that we've got the cut, the cut, and the score. Now normally, if we were to try to cut this right now, let's hit go and I'll show you what happens. Basically, the Cricut software uh, prepares multiple cutting mats for the various layers. Now, initially, I was like, okay, well, I don't want the score lines to be on a separate mat. Obviously, I want them to cut all at the same time. So let's go back. And under pot, what we need to do is we need to highlight the entire pot by clicking here. And we want to click this button that says attach. Okay. And basically, in other words, what you're telling it is that 
I want to group all these together on one mat, and I just want you to do everything that I told you to do, but do it on one mat. Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens here. So if we hit go, now suddenly we have these pieces. It automatically puts it on a separate mat because it knows by color that you're gonna wanna cut these out of a certain color. Okay, and you can see that it's only gonna cut that. So it says, okay, here's what you need this, you're going to put this uh, color or whatever color or whatever pattern paper you want on a 12 by 12 mat. And when you hit go, it's going to cut this first. And when it's done, it's going to ask you for the next mat and it's going to cut this. Now you'll see here that there are, you'll see the scissors and the score option. As, as you can see on the mat here, the dark lines indicate where it's going to cut and the, um, you know, the gray lines indicate where it's going to score. And now, if you're making more than one, you can increase this value. Let's say you want to make three of these. You can hit apply and it will put these and actually see what it did here was it realized that you can save some paper by putting that same shape on here twice. So you only need two mats instead of three. This file is too big. You can only cut one on one 12 by 12. So it obviously, you know, created three separate mats for that. But again, uh, it knows to cut and score that. And here you can specify the size of material you're using, so on and so forth. And once we get our machine, we're going to actually be able to test it and cut it. And you would do that by hitting go. So all in all, the, you know, the, the interface, as far as cutting RSVG files, it works pretty well. Um, minus the fact that you have to size the files manually. And again, I mentioned that from a software standpoint, this is something that, that can be fixed or remedied, I'm sure. And I'm sure that that's something that they're going to look into and make sure that they, they do that just to save you the hassle. And beyond that, I, I, I do think that it's kind of cool how, you know, if you want to cut more than one, you can specify that and it will basically figure out how many mats to use for each color and things of that nature. Uh, another cool feature is now say for example, so this teapot obviously requires all of these different SVG files uh, in order to create that final product. So the cool thing is, is you can import them. Obviously you have to import them one at a time, but once you get them in here, you can insert the image and you can actually save this. Okay, and give it a name and keep it in your archive if you ever want to recut it again. Now, one thing I was initially concerned about was this share feature, but unfortunately, well, actually fortunately for us, anything that's an SVG file, you can't share. Okay, so if you're using, if you're using cricket based content, you can actually lay out your own project on a mat, save it, and then sh and click this little box here, this share box, and you'll get a specific URL that you can share with your friends, and they can open up your project, and as long as they have the content and they own the content, they can replicate your project. But again, I was told that this is not going to work. This share feature is not allowed with SVG files, and that's a great thing because obviously we don't want people sharing our content. So uh, thank you, Cricut, for thinking of us. So we'll hit save, and it basically saves that project so you can go back to it. And again, I only put three files on the mat right now, but obviously if you wanted to put all of the files related to this project on your canvas, as it's called, and save it to bring it back up again in the future, it will actually save you some time. So now let me show you a non-three-dimensional SVG cuts file. And we're going to go ahead and hit Upload Image. And I actually have one already uploaded. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this camera. And as you can see, it imports it with the colors that we saved it as. So if you wanted to cut this at whatever size, you could hit Go. And it will actually separate out the colors for you if you wanted to do it this way. Now, some of you are a little more advanced and you don't want to have each piece use up an entire 12 by 12 piece and you want to use scraps and things of that nature. So you can always go in here, click on this, 
and hit attach. That will remove those colors. You can right click and detach and then you can move these. Actually, you don't even have to move these pieces apart. When you hit go, it recognizes that you know you have all these pieces and it will lay them out for you uh, on the mat so that they're spaced far enough apart where they don't overlap. And then all you have to do is cut out your squares to kind of match up what you see there, pop it in and, and go ahead and cut it. So, you know, overall, my impressions of this software are really good. I'm actually surprised at how well everything works. Uh, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've not yet tested this with the actual machine, so I don't know what it looks like when it cuts out, but from what I've heard, uh, you know, this is probably Cricut's most accurate cutting machine, and we will provide side-by-side -side comparisons of the Explore next to such machines as the Cameo and the Eclipse, and uh, you know, we'll see what we determine based on those tests. Uh, but again, you know, the software is not as robust as some of the software out there as far as your shirt cuts a lots, your make the cuts go. Obviously, it doesn't have as many features as those programs, but again, the software is still, it's a baby, you know, it's in its infancy, and I'm sure as time goes on, they will improve it. If you guys think back to the days of Sure Cuts A Lot 1, well, you're, you're, you're kind of looking at it. It's a little bit more advanced, but, you know, this is still a, a new software, and I'm sure that based on feedback, uh, they will continue to improve it. I'm, I hope they do anyway. I'm sure they will. But for those of you that have been considering the Cricut Explorer and you're just waiting to find out whether or not you're going to have the ability to use our files, and, and this applies to those of you that have hundreds of Cricut cartridges and, and you, you don't want them to go to waste, you know, this may be a great option for you. And again, we'll know more once we actually get to test out the actual machine with our cuts. And as I mentioned before, we recently did a, a review on the Brother Scan and Cut, and I personally was not a big fan of the process, only because, well, mostly because of the fact that the machine is completely isolated. You really can't have it connected to the computer, and I, I just I felt that that was you know, uh, just a very tedious process, and I'm just not a big fan of what I think is kind of taking a step backwards. Now, again, as I mentioned, the, the Cricut Design Space, it's a new software, so again, it's not as robust as your Sure Cuts A Lots, your ECALs, your Make the Cuts, uh, but if you're just looking for something that will cut files from SVG cuts, it looks like, again, pending our test with the actual machine, that this may be a viable option for you. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.